Clam digging is a real fun family activity. This is the original clam crack. My son digging clams when he was like two years old up here in Alaska. And there he is today. No worse for the wear. And still clamming. The family that clams together stays together, right? Anyway, clam digging is really muddy and fun and dirty and yummy. I love it. Look at me back in the 1980s digging those buggers up. And there's my sister. Came up here in the early 80s and got her own razor clams. Good fun. A good start to any clam chowder is salt pork. Now I could have gone to the store and bought some, but it's full of nitrites and nitrates and other nasty things I don't like to eat. So guess what? <laughs> I made my own salt pork. I just took some pork belly and cut it up a little bit set it in this container with a bunch of Hawaiian rock salt and left it in the refrigerator for a week and it's perfect for what we're going to make today so what I'm going to have to do though is brush off the salt and uh, soak this uh, salt pork in a little bit of water to take some of the salt out and freshen it up a little bit all right okay I've soaked this uh, salt pork for about an hour or so in some cold water and now I'm going to trim it and cut it up. It's about four ounces is what you're going to need. But what I'm going to do is cut off the rind because the rind, this is pork belly that I, um, what do you call, salted. Cut off the rind and then dice it up into smaller pieces. I guess I shouldn't have cut it so small in the first place, but oh well. Um, I kind of want to dice it into little, oh, I don't know, quarter inch or half inch cubes. And toss it into my awaiting pot. So, unless you're going to be braising this pork belly, and that was for you, Slats. Unless you're going to be braising this the uh, rind, i.e. skin, of this pork belly will be really tough. So we're going to go ahead and cut off that rind. You know, like I said, having some salt pork for your chowder is a really good start. Kind of like a bunch of lawyers at the bottom of the ocean. No offense to lawyers, but anyway, had to throw that in. Oh. Just about done. Like I said, I want about four ounces of the salt pork. You don't have to be obsessive like me. If you want to go to the store and buy that Hormel salt pork, that's fine. It's all good, right? So, oops. Mm -hmm. And just about done. I don't know how that's going to work. Well, that looks good. doesn't have any rind on it. Oh, well, sweet. Uh-oh. Is that bamboo board too noisy for the camera? I don't know. Okay, so there we go. Everything in one happy place in the pot. All right, next on our list of ingredients is oh, about a medium onion. I like the sweet ones. I think they just impart a better flavor than a plain old yellow onion. And, you know, I kind of take things for granted. I kind of think that people know how to do all this stuff. But if I'm going to be appealing to a wider audience, I think I'm going to show some of these prep steps. Anyway, I peel the onion first. And I'll show you how I dice my onion. But you want your onion diced up. Oh, into about a medium dice or so, I guess. But this is what I do. I go ahead and... Let's see, everything good there? Yeah. I go ahead and cut it this way first. Keep your fingers away from that knife. It's about quarter inch pieces. And then I just kind of come in at an angle. And gradually work my way to where I have the knife vertical at the top of the hump. And as I start working this way, I start getting into a predicament. I'm like, holy crap. 
my fingers are kind of running out of room here so what I end up doing is I just go ahead and rotate this baby this way 90 degrees start all over works out really slick okay so I've diced my onion and you know what that's gonna be enough onion I think so I'm gonna wrap up this other half you know this these things aren't 100% you got to do this you got to do that this isn't brain surgery um, adjust as you go yeah maybe I need a little bit I don't know so I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe take half of that half and do like I did before I really like this bamboo cutting board because it kind of makes you sound like you're doing something there we go that ought to be just right so this was about what three quarters of an onion or so and in it goes all right next on my hit parade of ingredients is a couple celery ribs trim off the ends make it get it into a more manageable size and go ahead and dice that up into smaller yeah, little quarter inch dice or so put that in there with my onions or onions as normal people call them and these will be my aromatics then I'm going to be cooking with my salt pork So there we have it okay so I'm going to turn the heat on to about medium or so on my stove you'll have to adjust it based on your own stove but I, I don't want to get it too hot I've got my salt pork in there and then I'm going to add in my onions and celery on my aromatics and get that all nice and going on in there so, kind of stir that all up together. Now, I don't want to cook this to where it's all brown. I just want it to where my celery and my onions are just kind of opaque. And uh, the, the reason why, I don't know, it's just me. I don't like it to get brown because I like my chowder white. And if I brown the vegetables and the uh, salt pork, It'll impart a kind of a darker color to my chowder, and I like it to be really like snowy white, if you can understand me. Okay, very good. We'll, we'll just let this cook down for a little bit and come back to it later. My salt pork is looking pretty good, and my aromatics are you know, just turning opaque. Kind of screwed up a little bit, and let's see. Got a little browning in there, but not too bad. So at this point, I am going to take a couple of tablespoons of butter and toss them in there let's see where's my butter uh oh okay here it is Ooh. okay a couple tablespoons of butter boom and then i'm going to add a couple tablespoons of flour and make myself a little roux with the flour and butter it can act as a thickening agent right and so stir that around cook it for about three minutes or so just to where your butter is melted and your flour is kind of incorporated
Okay, now I'm going to add one bottle, it's about 8 ounces, of this Atlantic brand clam juice. Now, this is a really good brand. It doesn't have any additives or anything like that in it of uh, clam juice. Um, I know that probably the most popular nationwide brand is Snow's, and you can use that if you that's, if that's all you got. But if you can find this stuff, this is a good stuff to get, okay? Stir it around. And then add my potatoes. Now we're going to let this cook down until my potatoes are nice and cooked through. It should take about, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. All right, and uh, off we go. You know what? I don't like the looks of that. I think I'm going to add another bottle of clam juice. Thank goodness I bought two. I like the clam juice to be covering the potatoes. I think I just kind of went overboard a little bit on the amount of potatoes I got, but oh well. I didn't see it was perfect. Okay, there. That looks much better. Okay, so here we go. Put the lid on and let it rip for about 15, 20 minutes on a very low heat so it doesn't quite boil, but uh, it's a nice simmer, okay? Cool. Okay, so while the uh, potatoes are cooking, it's time for the Guest of Honor. This is a bag of Cook Inlet Razor Clams. These are harvested in Cook Inlet right here in Alaska at a place called Poly Creek. And they are really delicious. This is about a pound bag of clams. If you can't get razor clams at home, you know, use whatever, improvise. I've used the Snows canned clams before, um, and it, that works. But if you can get these, these are, this is the way to go. Find a specialty store that carries these. Uh, my local Asian store that I love to go to called Sagaya's, they carry these. And my um, other seafood store, uh, what's it called? Ten to them Seafoods carries these as well. So anyway, I'm going to open this package of clams up. I'm just going to cut a little, oops, little hole up and then drain the juice into my bowl. It's going to be a little messy cutting this up. These clams come frozen. So if you can like have them semi-frozen, it makes it a lot easier to cut up. But I kind of screwed up, got them totally thawed out, but that's okay. And make sure you recover all the juice and whatnot. So there we go. <clears throat> I'm just going to chop these up. There's no secret technique to doing this. Do it one direction and then turn them around and do them in the other direction. Start at the beginning end at the end is what I say. You kind of want to, you know, chop them up to your personal size. There is no right answer, no right, wrong answer. Just turn it 90 degrees and cut them this way. This is going to be very clammy, very yummy. Oh man, I could eat this raw. Let me try that. Oh yeah. Oh God. Holy smokes. That's good. Don't try that at home, kids. Now, once you think something's been frozen and treated properly, it's no big deal to eat it raw. Okay, so looking about where I want it to be. Fine tune a little bit. I 
Ooh, some big stuff over there. Woohoo! Alright, so off it goes into the clam bowl, which is the former potato bowl, which is the former onion and celery bowl. Multitasking. Okay. It smells so freaking sweet and briny and fresh from the sea. This is some good stuff. You gotta find this where you live. Because this is some really good stuff. Or go get it yourself. Uh, okay, let's see what's going on in here. It's been about 20 minutes or so. A lot of happy making. Oops, whoops. Going on in there. Um, yeah, it looks like our potatoes are pretty much, pretty much cooked through, nice and soft. Our flour and butter have done their job and thickened this up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and add my chopped up clams. <clears throat> Stir that around. Still not quite done, right? I mean, I guess if you wanted clam soup, you could go ahead and stop there, but... I like mine New England style. Creamy, white. So I'm going to add about a cup of half and half. I'm trying to cut the calories just a little bit by using half and half versus cream. And look at that, how beautiful it is, right? All nice and snowy white. The clams don't need a whole lot of time to cook. I'm just going to heat through the half and half and the uh, clams in yeah, maybe five minutes or so. I'm just going to be ready to go. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. Sweet. <clears throat> Everything's kind of heated through nice and thick. I think it's time to eat. Okay, time for some really good looking razor clam chowder and a little bit of corn to go with it. We'll see how it tastes. All okay, right. another wonderful dinner in Kent's Alaskan kitchen. Uh, razor clam chowder using homemade salt pork as our meat ingredient. And I didn't add any salt to this because I figured the um, salt pork probably infused it with enough salt. So let me take a taste. Yeah, just right. A little bit of freshly ground black pepper is all she really needs. And off we go. Okay, until next time, see you around.